Man, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a creator spotlight and I'm going to be focusing in on one of my favorite creators of all time, Darwin Cook. Uh, if you've never read anything by Darwin, do so immediately. Go out, buy something with the man's name on it. It is all fantastic work. Literally, the guy has got basically the Midas touch. Anything that he wrote or illustrated was great. Unfortunately, Darwin lost his battle to lung cancer this past weekend and it just caught everybody off guard, me especially. Nobody knew in the industry that the man had cancer. It was something he kept very tight to his chest and it was literally announced Friday that he had it and then Saturday the next day we found out he died. Very tragic stuff, however the man left a legacy that anybody in the industry, any comic writer, any artist would be proud to have. So today we're going to highlight some of his books and some of the stuff that you should definitely be picking up if you are interested in Darwin Cook. So, let's get into it. Darwin really got his start on the famous Batman the Animated TV series. Uh, yes, if you are a child that was raised in the 90s, such as myself, you knew this series. You loved the Batman Animated series. He was a storyboard artist on that series, and he did a lot of work on it. He then went on to work on projects such as Justice League Unlimited. Yes. Again, if you are a child that grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s, such as myself, this man was literally part of your childhood, and you didn't even realize it. Darwin would try to get work for years and years in the comic book industry. However, nobody wanted to hire him. The reason behind this was because Darwin's art style was so different and unique at the time, where everybody was focusing in on the extreme style of comics. This was the early 2000s, late 90s, where everybody like... Rob Leefield, Joe Quesada, where bigger was better, things like that. Darwin's art style was very minimalistic. It was very much a style of a classic era, yet at the same time, it was timeless. It's very, very hard to explain it, but once you see it, and once you see his work and how much he was able to do with so little bit of line work, it's just fantastic. Darwin really didn't catch his big break in the comic book industry until he wrote Batman Ego. Batman Ego is a miniseries that he was allowed to publish and he pretty much got free reign on and it explores the ego of Batman and the psyche of Batman and Batman's internal struggle. It's a really fascinating read and it's actually kind of different than the other stuff that Darwin writes on in the future. More specifically, his magnum opus, New Frontier, which I'm going to be talking about next. In 2004, Darwin dropped his magnum opus, New Frontier. New Frontier is fantastic. New Frontier centers on the formation of the Justice League. However, it's set in the early 1900s when the Justice League was just starting to get together in the actual comic books. It is awesome. It's the, the best way that I can honestly describe it is the right stuff for comics, which is basically what Darwin Cook said himself. It harkens back to a time when superheroes were allowed to be super, when they were allowed to have fun, to be joyful, to smile. This is something that is sorely lacking from our comic book industry today. Everything today is grimdark. It's just to the point where it's almost becoming impenetrable for kids to get into it. And Darwin wanted to make something that you can give to your kids and adults could read at the same time. And he wanted to prove that just because these characters have evolved throughout the years does not mean that they should lose what made them who they are when they first started. I was fortunate enough to actually meet Darwin Cook at the time that New Frontier was published and I loved his interpretation of Wonder Woman so much that I actually asked him at a convention and said hey would you ever consider doing like a published book just on Wonder Woman because I love how you treated her character she's awesome in the book and to quote Darwin he basically told me yeah, I would love to. I pitched it to him. Unfortunately, DC doesn't like my interpretation of the character because they think she's too fat. The next big thing that Darwin would go on to write is the Richard Stark Parker series. Uh, the Parker series is fantastic. Richard Stark is actually a pseudonym for Donald Westlake who wrote this series of books focusing on this criminal slash thief called Parker. Uh, you've probably seen different interpretations of him throughout the years in certain movies, most notably Mel Gibson in the film Payback. The Parker series is fantastic. I love these books. Darwin Cook gets what makes the Richard Stark slash Donald Westlake books so great. 
He's able to draw them in a way that you just don't need any dialogue in certain panels and you understand what's going on. They are beautiful books and the Martini collection, the oversized collection of them, is the magnum opus of my collection. I absolutely love the Martini edition. Again, pick it up, really. The next big thing that Darwin would go to work on is the Before Watchmen series for DC Comics. Uh, the Before Watchmen series was a bit controversial when it first came out because of the fact that everybody basically said you can't improve upon the Watchmen. The Watchmen is Alan Moore's magnum opus, you can't improve upon it, it's basically comic book perfection, and uh, my opinion most of them were correct. You really didn't get much out of the Before Watchmen series except for a few titles here and there. I personally thought it was just a blatant cash grab with the exception of the Darwin Cook stuff. He wrote the book Silk Spectre and he wrote and illustrated the book Minutemen, both of which are very, very good reads and I highly recommend you pick them up. The last series that Darwin would do before he ended up passing was the Twilight Children. Uh, I have not had a chance to actually read the series. It just came out this week in trade paperback and it looks like it's already flying off the shelves and out of stock. I'm looking forward to reading it and I'm looking forward to providing a review for you guys. Everything that I've heard of though is that the series has actually received mixed reviews on the writing, but like always Darwin's art is consistent and it's great. So that about sums up the man's major works. Uh, I've covered a few of the things here, but really I think I've only touched on some of the stuff that he's done. Uh, multiple covers for DC Comics, Jonah Hex, work on Ecstatic, just on and on and on and on and on. And the fact of the matter is that I think Darwin Cook's work will be remembered in the same vein that we remember Jack Kirby. It is that good and it is that much of a resonating thing. And it's such a shame that we lost the man at such a young age, 53 years old, and my thoughts and prayers go out to the Cook family at this time. Uh, if you can, this is usually the part where I plug my own stuff. I'm not doing that on this video. What I'm going to say is that if you have the extra cash, or anything like that, please go out and donate to a local charity or any charity that is looking for cancer research because of the fact of the matter is we need to be able to stomp this little bastard out. Well, not little, but we need to be able to stomp this bastard out because at the end of the day, um, there's really nothing else I can say except fuck cancer.